Hi, I'm Dick Smothers, and this is my brother Tom, and welcome to the original Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. You know, when we're performing around the country, people frequently ask us about our Comedy Hour show. Mm -hmm. They want to know when and where and why we're bringing them back, <laughs> or when will we bring them back. Now, why is a good question, too. Okay, well, the answer is here and now you're going to be seeing them on entertainment television. The show you're about to see was taped before a live audience at Television City Hollywood on December 12th, 1968. And our guest stars were Bob Newhart, the first edition, and the West Coast cast of the musical Hair. You know, looking back, it's interesting to see how each of these guests had a significant impact on entertainment. Bob Newhart came to prominence in the early 60s with a best-selling album called The Button-Down Mind of Bob Newhart. But he may be the most successful comic in the history of television comedy. He had the Bob Newhart variety show in the early 60s. He had the Bob Newhart show with Suzanne Pochette in the 70s. Then there was the Newhart show in the 80s. And then the plain Bob, just Bob, which he launched in September of 92. The first edition made an impact with their song, What Condition My Condition Is In, mm -hmm. but they may be best remembered for having Kenny Rogers as their lead singer. Mm -hmm. Of course, he went on to be one of the most successful country pop stars of all time. And hair definitely had an impact. The play helped define the 60s. It was part protest, part awakening of sexuality, and part rock and roll, all rolled up in one powerful package. So let's take a look at how these high-impact entertainers looked on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, December 8, 1968. Mother's Brothers Comedy Hour, 0212, show number 10, take one. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, wait a minute, I'm too tired to go on the show. Tell me, we just started. What are you tired Everything. about? Everything. I'm tired of Hollywood. I'm tired of rehearsals. Oh, I'm no, tired of show on, business. Come the whole on, thing is just you exhausted can't me. I'm be that tired. tired. You're young. You're vital. You're healthy. I'm tired of being. I'm tired of being healthy. Oh. I'm tired. I, 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 oh, I'm, oh. That really makes. Would you rather be old? Huh? That, that that'd be pretty great. Then I could retire because. Oh, that's I've great. Had it. That's right. Gee, you could retire. You could lie around all day. You could. Uh, no work. No worries. Yeah. No parties. No girls. Just fond memories. I envy you, Tommy. Let's get on with the show, huh? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you wanted to retire. What's the matter? Not until I've knocked off a few more good memories. <laughs> it was Mother's Brothers Comedy Hour with guest star, First Edition. A West Coast company of hair. Paul Hampton. Special guest star, Bob Newhart. Our Jimmy Joy singers, Ron Poindexter, dancers, and Nelson Riddle and his orchestra. The next group was with us last season and was with us on the Glen Campbell Smothers show That's right. on the summer. Let's say that again. The Glen Campbell Smothers show on the summer. It was the Smothers. Read my other golden okay. words. Down. And we're happy to have them back to sing their new hit song. They are Thelma, Kenny, Mike, Terry, and Mickey. And they asked the musical question, but you know I love you. That's not a question, Tommy. That's a statement. Well, I didn't write that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the first edition. Hi, I'm Dick Smothers, and this is my brother Tom, and welcome to the original Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. You know, when we're performing around the country, people frequently ask us about our Comedy Hour show. Mm -hmm. They want to know when and where and why we're bringing them back, <laughs> or when will we bring them back. Now, why is a good question, too. Okay, well, the answer is here and now you're going to be seeing them on entertainment television. The show you're about to see was taped before a live audience at Television City Hollywood on December 12th, 1968. And our guest stars were Bob Newhart, the first edition, and the West Coast cast of the musical Hair. You know, looking back, it's interesting to see how each of these guests had a significant impact on entertainment. Bob Newhart came to prominence in the early 60s with a best-selling album called The Button-Down Mind of Bob Newhart. But he may be the most successful comic in the history of television comedy. He had the Bob Newhart variety show in the early 60s. He had the Bob Newhart show with Suzanne Pochette in the 70s. Then there was the Newhart show in the 80s. And then the plain Bob, just Bob, which he launched in September of 92. 
The first edition made an impact with their song, What Condition My Condition Is In, mm -hmm. but they may be best remembered for having Kenny Rogers as their lead singer. Mm -hmm. Of course, he went on to be one of the most successful country pop stars of all time. And hair definitely had an impact. The play helped define the 60s. It was part protest, part awakening of sexuality, and part rock and roll, all rolled up in one powerful package. So let's take a look at how these high-impact entertainers looked on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, December 8, 1968. Mother's Brothers Comedy Hour, 0212, show number 10, take one. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, wait a minute, I'm too tired to go on the show. Tell me, we just started. What are you tired Everything. about? Everything. I'm tired of Hollywood. I'm tired of rehearsals. Oh, I'm no, tired of show business. The whole thing is just you exhausted can't me. I'm be that tired. tired. You're young. You're vital. You're healthy. I'm tired of being. I'm tired of being healthy. Oh. I'm tired. I. I. I oh, I'm, oh. That really makes. Would you rather be old? Huh? That, that. That'd be pretty great. Then I could retire because. Oh, that's I've great. Had it. That's right. Gee, you could retire. You could lie around all day. You could. Uh, no work. No worries. Yeah. No parties. No girls. Just fond memories. I envy you, Tommy. Let's get on with the show, huh? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you wanted to retire. What's the matter? Not until I've knocked off a few more good memories. <laughs> it was Mother's Brothers Comedy Hour with guest star, First Edition. Ladies and gentlemen, the next guest, I'm happy to say, is a very good friend of ours. And we're very happy to know him. And we'd like to share knowing him with you. He has a sharp, cynical, sharp wit, a charming man, and a, a credit to America. You could probably learn something from him. I probably could, smart aleck. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Newhart. Thank you, Tommy and Dick. There are, there are more planes in the air today than ever before in the history of aviation. And our airports are overcrowded, and it's just about impossible to control all of that air traffic. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in uh, an airport control tower, but at every busy airport, there's one guy, and his job is to keep track of everything. And he is called the traffic control officer. He has a radar screen in front of him, and he wears a headset like this. Oh, okay, all right, United uh, 209. Yeah, we have radar contact. You're looking very good. Pa Pan American 715. You, uh, you, you haven't seen United 209 up there anywhere, have you? <laughs> it's a big plane. It's one of, one of those four-engine jobs. It's uh, got United on the side. You, you can't miss it. Well, if you see him, would you tell him to call in? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, 715, we're pretty jammed up here. I, I'm going to have to put you in the holding pattern. How, how's, how's your visibility? Yeah, uh, look, look off to your left about three miles over San Bernardino. Yeah, do you see all the planes? Yeah, uh, uh, just uh, take a place anywhere there. You, you can find some. <laughs> we'll, we'll call you back as soon as we have an opening. Uh, no, no, don't, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> okay, you guys on the ground. Who, who wants to go up? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Not all at once, guys. Which one of you guys have ever been up before? <laughs> uh, which one of the two of you has, a, has an open runway in front of him? Br Bran Branner 26. Okay, uh, uh, straight up, you, you pull up at the ocean, turn right, right again, and then uh, straight ahead to Salt Lake City. <laughs> no, you, you can't miss it. It's got a big tabernacle. <laughs> uh, 715, I got to have an unidentified blip here. A yeah. uh, blip? Yeah, uh, listen, could you identify yourself? A, a Piper Cub. <laughs> this is International Airport. We're sort of busy, you know. Why, why don't you try one of the local fields? Be because your wife is meeting you here. Huh? <laughs> uh, where are you exactly, uh, Piper? The, the Texaco Station at Hollywood and Western. <laughs> <laughs> All right, st uh, straight out the door and look to your right. You see the big hamburger sign? Yeah, t take off over that. Now, you can't miss us. We're the first international airport on your right. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave the lights on. Don't, don't worry. 
Uh, uh, Miami 209. Yeah, you're, you're a little off course. C could you speak a little slower? Who, who is this, anyway? No. Just, just a passenger. Uh, <laughs> could, uh, could you let me speak to someone in charge? Y you are. <laughs> where, where is, uh, where's the pilot? Uh, how about the stewardess? They, they, they are, huh? <laughs> you uh, you ever ever landed a big plane like this before? <laughs> no, no, it's easy. You just uh, disengage your, your automatic pilot. It's it's a lever over your head to, to the right. Not uh, not all the way to the right. You 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 already pull it. <laughs> I, I don't know how to tell you this. Uh, you, you just emptied the washrooms. <laughs> uh, Piper, could you hold on? I have an emergency call. Yeah, yeah, Pan Am. What is it? Yeah, that, that was 209 from Miami. It, he, he's a new boy. It, it won't happen again, I guarantee it. <laughs> right, right, right in the fan jet, huh? <laughs> how, how about your wipers? Are they still working? <laughs> well, why, why don't you just tell the passengers it was a giant eagle? I, I think... <laughs> Okay, okay, 209, I'm going to talk you down. You see the little Piper cub in front of you? Yeah, just, just follow the little fella on down. Yeah, uh, Piper? Look, I, I don't want you to get excited, but uh, as soon as you touch down, you, you keep moving, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and promise me one thing. Don't, don't look behind you, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, you can take it from here. I'm going on my lunch break. <laughs> She's really great. It's always a pleasure to have Bob Newhart on the show. Uh, during the summer, uh, when Tommy and I were doing a concert tour, I took time out one afternoon to go to Indianapolis Raceway Park, where they were holding a National Hot Rod Association uh, National Drag Finals. Now, at the tail end of the film that we'll be showing you in just a minute, Don Garlitz, the premier drag star in the world and five-time national champion, will drive his AA fuel dragster 240 miles an hour from a standing start, and he'll reach this in just 6.7 seconds. But right now, at the outset, get ready to ride with me in the Smothers Brothers Racing Team's drag car. <laughs> Now I'm warming up the tires there. To get a good start, you have to get the, your tires very hot. That must be a fan. I... Okay, that, the lights are going to start in just a second. Now, this is how you start. When it, when it reads green, you hit your gas. That's the first time I did drive a drag car, and I went through the quarter mile in 12.7 seconds and roughly 109 miles an hour, which is close to the national record. Not quite, but close. You left off a plane here to the nationals and took your first ride in the Smothers Schieffer Oldsmobile. Any first impressions? Yeah, it's, it's really a, it's an unusual sensation from uh, racing a road track to, to, to stock car. I can't. The brutal, uh, first thing I came to my mind was the brutal power and the, the transmission of that power. You know, the way you slip off that clutch and it just, uh, just shakes the heck out of you. You've seen the big fuel drags as the 230 mile an hour cars. Do you feel any urge to maybe try well, your hand? I don't even feel the urge to watch them close. I mean, they're scary.
ladies and gentlemen, that's just a sample of the excitement you could see at a National Hot Rod Association drag race. And I really recommend that, if you can, go see one. You'll really enjoy it. We'll be back in just a moment. About eight months, months ago... You said monks. <laughs> you said eight months ago. Boy, the monks are going to write in. <laughs> Try to straighten out your mouth. Yeah. And that, there's nothing to worry about because they, they print so slowly in yeah. those catacombs. Do this thing I wrote. Okay, about eight months ago, a new musical opened on Broadway entitled Hair. It was such a hit that it's played to standing room audiences only every single night since. Yes. And it's been billed as the American Tribal Rock Musical. That's right. It's also been called a lot of other things <laughs> <laughs> by the monks. Right. <laughs> It happens to be one of the most controversial plays to happen in a long time, That's right. mainly because it deals in some of the most controversial subjects of the day and like, things that are like held... What? Well, things... I don't want to even talk about it. <laughs> it, has, it has a lot of things in it that, sh that probably tread on a lot of... Uh, toes? A lot of toes, although it's, it's a thing that represents... The show represents a generation that happened during our time, which was the hippie and uh, love generation. That's right. The play recently opened in Los Angeles at the Aquarius Theater, and we asked the cast, headed by its co-authors... Jerome Ragney and, and Jerry Rado. Yeah. Rado they... and Ragney. What? Rado and Ragney. That's a great team. You know, two monks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if they come down and perform for us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, hair! <laughs>
We'll be right back with Bob Newhart, the first edition of Paul Hampton, on the second half of the Smothers Comedy Brothers Hour. We would like to do a ballad, my brother and myself, combining our voices as once, once we did long ago. And the we sing days. a ballad entitled Machaya. What? Machaya. <laughs> Machaya is an Israeli folk no, song no, no, describing you're wrong, the you're incredible. Wrong. Wait a minute. What, mar- it's not Machaya. It's Mariah. It's Machaya. No, no, no. It's it's Mach. No, no, excuse me. It's Mariah. It's not. Machaya. You just about said Machaya. Yeah, but I was thinking it's Mariah, and it's not Israeli. Folk you don't. Song. Des- it's not an Israeli folk song. It. It's an Israeli folk song. It is song. not. It's, a, it's not from Israel. It's Dutch. It's an old Dutch folk song from Holland. And they, it's entitled, They Call the Wind Mariah. Not Mariah. Mariah. <laughs> this is an, we'd like to do for you, it, it's an old Dutch folk song. Right. From the Israeli section of Holland. <laughs> and it tells how important the wind is. In working the windmills in this section of Holland, five five-starred windmills blown by the wind and it's also though a love story a beautiful love story about this young couple very much in love skipping gaily across grass-covered slopes hand in hand and the story actually tells how they're having a picnic under one of these great five-winged windmills the sky was blue and love shone out of the young bright eyes as they looked in the skies and saw the bluebirds singing and then the boy had to leave his girl, and he went away. And when he came back, he had went away. See, he went away and left his love underneath the windmill, and when he came back, she had got caught in the blades. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's a terrible thing to say. Yeah, she's all right now, though. Oh, that's fine. They call the wind Mariah. Fire is Joe, and they call the wind Mariah. I up knows the stars around it and sets the clouds to fly. Mariah makes the mountain sound like folks was up there dying.
What would happen if the sky was green? Mom was short and Sam was seen. Now that's her and it was small. And Uncle Charlie had it all. And just suppose that white was black. Black was white and red was green. And everything you'd ever seen. The car reversed and tossed about. And left around there'd be no doubt. You'd wonder too if all you said. I thought about a lot how things would be if they were different. If they were different, I thought about what like, they'd be like. Like what? Like, uh, you know what would happen if it took eight days to create the world? No, what? Uh, we go to church on Monday. <laughs> it's not that funny. I never thought of it. Well, what would happen if crime paid? If? Yeah, what? Same people that have the money. <laughs> hey, Paul. Yeah, give it away. Paul. Give it to yeah. Paul. Take it. What would happen? What would happen if there were a generation gap? If there were no generation gap? No generation gap. Well, Dad, uh, tonight I am uh, throwing my velveteen bell bottoms with my high collar flower shirt, and uh, I'm gonna go out with my weirdo friends, and we're gonna play electric guitar as loud as we can, and we're gonna drink, and we're gonna take in a wild orgy or two. You wanna come along? No, son, I think your mother and I'll just stay home and get stoned. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if 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 I wonder what would happen if. Hey, what would happen if we never ever had to go to the dentist again? Ah. And what would happen if we grew up, got married, and lived happily ever after? Ah. And what if your wife would let you go out with the guys whenever you wanted to? Ah. And what if your wife would let you go out with the girls whenever you wanted to? Ah. And what if the Pope were Jewish? Oh. I wonder what would happen if 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 I wonder what would happen if. And what would happen if racial equality? and equal opportunity were a reality. Mr. Vice President, I think yes. for security reasons, we better make a right turn at the next corner. Yes, well, fine, fine. Hadn't we better tell the President? Good move. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. President, I think we better turn at the right at the next corner. <laughs> hey, what would happen? Listen to this. What would happen if a patient refused to pay his psychiatrist? Well, doctor. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, doctor, I'm sorry I won't be able to pay your bill because I need the money for my vacation. Oh, then I'm going to have to repossess. Repossess what? Your sanity. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't do that because I'm cured already. I haven't stuttered in six months. Why, you little shrimp, you're inadequate because you're short and you're not half the man your father was and you never will be. And it doesn't matter how many women you try, you're never going to find your mother that way. Further... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. One of the people in, uh, in uh, Palm Springs who saw the stag movie that came on television accidentally right after the Late Late Show. I'll be in in a minute, honey. I just... Late Late Show's going off. They're running the titles now. All right, honey, I'm coming in. <laughs> Another movie started, honey. I don't know who's in it. So it's, it's unknown, son. Well, the, the girl is awfully good, honey. I, I know there's no sound, honey. You don't. You don't need the sound. 
It's one of those Italian movies with the subtitles. I, I don't know if it's a movie or one of those new series, honey. If it's a series, it's a winner, I'll tell you. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if, would happen if, would happen if. Hey, what if some politicians got what they really deserved? All right, Senator, your appeal's been denied. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, they can't do this to me. I'm going to talk to my congressman and the governor. Congressman, governor? Yes, yeah. <laughs> now, what would happen if the human race, instead of having two arms, had been created with one arm in the center of their body? Huh? But I'll clap like this. <laughs> what would happen if the day was night and night was day and baseball players forgot to play? Friday came at the first of the weekend. Traffic ran on freeway streets. And two o'clock came right at noon. Babies came from lima beans. And everything you'd ever seen was all reversed and tossed about. Left around, there'd be no doubt You'd wonder too when all you said came out like this I wonder what would happen if Would happen if now, What would have happened if George Wallace had been elected president? Oh, yes, sir, may I help you? Yes, I'd like to make some reservations on the next boat leaving for Australia All right, is that uh, one way or round trip? Uh, one way will be fine All right, now do you want that uh, first class or tourist? Well, it really doesn't make any difference I just want to get out Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, how many people in your party? 180 million. We'd like to thank our guest for this week, Bob Newhart, Who the first you, edition. Tommy? You've got a kiss mark on you. No one kissed me. You've got two red marks. Either your sloppy shaver or someone kissed you. Know what? Uh, you someone kissing? Someone kissed me. Who was it? Come on now. Come on now. We're just you and me. Nobody listening. <laughs> think of something funny. I mean, you're building up to a joke. No, there was. Someone kissed you now. There was. Um, we're on a prime time show, and you should be neat at all times. Yeah. Look at that. Just it's disgusting. I mean, lips and everything. Right on you. Uh, just so, someone kissed me. Okay. Tune all, in next week. Find all the dancers. Kissed all all the at once. <laughs> no, Tiny Tim came in. <laughs> We'd like to thank our guests for this week. Bob Newhart, the first edition, Paul Hampton, and the West Coast cast of Hair. Let's give them a hand. Right. Oh, I just... I just thought about who kissed me. Who? Two monks. I'll get it. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Well, you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring it up. We'll well, we'll oh, never mind. Next week, our guests will be George Carlin and The Doors. The Doors. The Doors. Really the Doors. Right. Exciting group. So, good night, ladies and gentlemen, and see you next week. All right. Good night. <laughs> production of hair directed by Tom O'Hargan and choreographed by Julie Arenau. Racing film by Gurney Shelby Filmhouse. This is Roger Carroll.
We hope you enjoyed that show. Bob Newhart, um, I met Bob Newhart back in, uh, in St. Louis in 1961. We, uh, some other brothers, you and I, were working at uh, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, and Bob came by, and uh, he and Shelley Berman were always, they did phone things, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, Real good But Bob was the best at that, and he still had the most wonderful timing because no one was talking on the other end. As I recall, the, uh, the bit he did on the show, which was the air traffic controller, was uh, mm -hmm. pretty instrumental in... It was part of his thing that he took right into his first sitcom, mm -hmm. the air traffic controller bit. That was, uh, was written by uh, Lorenzo Music and, uh, and Carl Gottlieb. And uh, they wrote it from, from word one. Now, Lorenzo wound up uh, producing, along with Dave Davis, producing the Bob Newhart show. Uh, and the first time I did it, it just felt so comfortable that, that I said, I've got to remember these guys' names because... I've been given a lot of material and it doesn't always feel that comfortable. Kenny Rogers uh, was on the show again because we fell in love with the uh, the first edition. Um, of course, we knew Kenny from when he was with the Bobby Doyle tree, the trio back there in, in 1961 in Houston. But you know, I Love You was a big hit. And, and uh, we, again, we came from the New Christie Minstrels where the format was everybody be a lead singer but be able to step back and sing harmony for the other person. And I was really lucky. I found some really unusual good songs and kind of established the precedent of where the group was going to go accidentally. could very easily have been Terry Williams sitting here talking to you now. It was uh, really interesting and a lot of fun for the Smothers Brothers to have the musical hair on the show. And uh, a little background on it, the hair was a big hit on in, in Broadway, right? Had mm -hmm. been a, a hit there for a while. And Tommy got involved with Michael Butler, the producer of Hair, and was uh, instrumental in bringing Bringing it out to uh, Hollywood to the, um, the old Moulin Rouge, which we, we bought. Uh, it was a for, supper, a big supper, supper club. club. and turning the, the Aquarius uh, Theater. We were rehearsing Hair, and uh, while they were doing the Hair, the, all these long hairs, uh, the guys' crews were a little ups, you know, looking at these guys. And they brought the American flag out and was part of the plane and touched the ground a couple of times. And so during the break after the blocking, um, there was a, the producer came and said, Tom, uh, the, the guys aren't going to do it. They're offended and they're, it's not, mm -hmm. not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's the matter? I said, well, they don't want the, the flags touching the ground and they're, they're not going to do it. So I went out and uh, I was very involved in the production. I went out and this, the guys were all at the, the canteen having a coffee and I said, What's the problem? He said, we're not going to deal with this. That's a, any American, I don't like the way it is. And I said, well, yeah. come on, we've got to do it's a It's a beautiful, hey, who wants to wrestle? And this big, burly cameraman get up. We hit. What did you do? You say you wrestle for it? Wrestle. We, I, I jumped on him. I said, well, you know, damn it. And we started rolling around. I he had my head lock. And we were, we were on the floor for about five, ten minutes there, rolling around. And the, they were hysterical. The cameraman, the crew started laughing. They, I said, they, what, what's the point? Let's go ahead and do it. We hope this comedy hour brought back some pleasant memories, or if you weren't around back then, maybe we showed you a little bit of what the world and TV were like in 1968.